Hey guys, and welcome back to the fourth episode of The Kingdom Mix. Hope you're having a lovely day. Today I'll be talking with a young, talented rapper from the city of New York, well, state of New York in America. His, he goes by the name of GF Woody. And I'll be interviewing him today about his music career and how he's growing as a young artist. Hopefully you can find something that uh, makes you more intelligent as we go along with this and more like connective and relative as we talk about his career. Hi, GF. Uh, <laughs> how, like, the first question that I want to ask you is, uh, what brought you into the music industry? Honestly, I didn't really want to get too deep into the music industry. I just really enjoyed making music. And the story I wanted to tell was one day I was with my friend in his house. Like, we were basically just sitting there. I spit, like, maybe two bars. And he was like, wow, this is really good. Yeah. And then he just, he just, he, he was like, yo, I got two beats on my computer. I was like, I didn't know anything about recording or yeah. nothing like that. So he just told me, he was like, if you like, if you want to do this, we could do this. I was like, there was two beats there. So I just started freestyling on like a $5 yeah. microphone. So we started off really basic, you know, cop, you heard the song cop. Yeah. It's not on SoundCloud right now. It'll be back on there soon. So anyway, that's the first song I ever made. So I'm re I literally made that on there in like five, six minutes, just freestyling. And like, I was just having fun and really enjoying it. So once I felt like the enjoyment of it, I was like, this is what I want to do. So shout out to my boy, Vin Sachi. That's my producer. You know, he really held it down, always motivated me to yeah, do my right. thing. And that's forever. That's forever. My producer always. It gets like that when you start off really small and you have to rise to the top, and that one person who motivates you as you go along with it, it just can it connects you and it makes you want to go further. Like right now, I'm also an artist with part of the Kingdom of Zara Records, who's helping me out and motivates me out so that we can actually right grow. On. And I think yes. it, it's beautiful because I I didn't start with this microphone. My first song was so bad. And, and most artists' first songs are really, really bad. But I listened to your song and it wasn't even bad. You started off at a good, strong start, which which means a lot of things that you, you have big places to go to, if you get what I'm saying. So Appreciate it. So like it just you need the motivation. What would you what would you say is a good motivational point that you would tell artists who are getting, let's say, bad criticism because people may be like jealous of them or something? I would tell them to just be themselves and enjoy what they're doing. If you're enjoying what you're doing, that's what it's all about. The day you stop enjoying it is the day you should stop. Like you RP Kobe Bryant, you know Kobe Bryant basketball player? Yeah, he enjoyed every moment of playing basketball. Once he was done with it, he was done with it. So you just got to have fun and um, embrace every moment and always take every opportunity. Don't let anybody tell you what you can or can't be. If you believe in yourself, you can do anything. You can do anything. You know, I, I really connect with you as an artist and as on a personal level because I think the words that you're saying are so true and vital that you just need to hear them at least once in your life. It's just right on. one of those things that if you lose the passion for something that you're doing, then you should change what you're doing and find your passion. Because I, I was reading this quote the other day and it said, your passion should be the reason why you are waking up in the morning, the reason why you stay alive, the reason why you want to keep going. So if you do lose that love in music and making music, then you may as well just stop it, right? Like that's 100%, what I think. I agree. That's right. Um, right on. How do, you, how do you get through writer's block? Because I know a lot of artists are currently struggling with that. Like they've got the motivation. They've got the fire beat. They've started off with a good chorus. Now they're stuck. They don't know what to write. And we've all been in that place. So what would you say to that? Honestly, I'm a, I'm a freestyle kind of dude. I don't really write that much. So if I'm freestyling and I really feel something, like I'm like, all right, this is stuck in my head. That's yeah. like when I'm feeling, I'm like, all right, this is going to be a good song because I'm really yeah. in the moment, in the mode. Yeah. I know it's good. But if it's like, if I'm just freestyling and like, it doesn't sound that good or like, I'll just stop and be like, all right, it's not the time right now. I need yeah. to take a break for a second, refocus. And then when I'm in that yeah. zone and I'm mentally locked in, that's when I could just get out there and just do my thing. And that's how I made my best stuff. Danny Dimes, it just hit 7K today. That's yeah. a, I made that in maybe five minutes. I was just in the zone, freestyled the whole thing, went over the ad lib. So yeah, when I'm really locked in, I feel like that's when I get the most out of it. 
Yeah, I think I think that's so true because I was uh, also reading another quote the other day in another blog, and it was saying the best way to get through writer's block is just to put everything down and relax for a bit, take your mind off it, go and do something else, and then when you're in that zone for that short five ten minute session, you can write something absolutely crazy. But what right I find on. the irony is is that you can be stuck trying to make one chorus for let's say five days when the song is like two minutes 40 seconds like it's 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 so small but it's so vital that you have to make it good that it's just like it's weird how much effort you have to put in but to make that fire when it comes out that's something all artists should be hoping for instead of worrying about about if their song's not going to be good enough they should be thinking how can they keep going how can they keep making it even if they get stuck in the in the it's right all about it's all about it's all about quality yeah a lot of people they try to over they overthink they make so much stuff but like the quality is not that good i'd rather have two or three songs that are really yeah. really good than make 10 or 11 and maybe one of them is half decent yeah because yeah I, I get what you're saying quality over quantity because right. I, I've, heard, I've heard artists with like two three songs they release that once every year and it's like whoa I will listen to that song the whole time through the year because it's so perfect and everything is right. so and the beat is perfect the song is perfect the lyrics are perfect like there'll be no point of trying to release five terrible songs I was talking with um, one of the uh, one of my piano tutors who was helping with, with, with me with my producing and he was talking about that if you release three good songs that's better than five average songs so they need to be perfect they need to be really energetic to get people listening instead of getting bored and thinking this is just an average SoundCloud rapper like that's not what we want right that's another thing that's the that's the realm you had to break out of. Like a lot of people, they try to box you in. It's like, oh, yeah. this kid's coming from SoundCloud. He's probably corny. Uh, you know, he's like a meme or something. That's another thing. I got I to gotta break out of that box. That's why I just try to do it through good music. If you have good music, you could break yourself out of that box. You yeah. don't want to be profiled as one of those like so-called SoundCloud rappers with all the face tattoos and stuff that they think you don't have skill automatically. But in reality, I'm one of those guys that has skill. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one of those guys that just use the stupid stuff for cloud. I'm actually, I'm actually good at this shit. I actually, I actually think that you have so much potential, not even potential. You've shown your talent. You've shown your potential through your music. Cause when I was listening to music, I wasn't just like, I was, I was first like, oh, this is just another SoundCloud rapper. He's probably going to be the beat off or something's going to be wrong with it or the vocals aren't going to be correct. But then I listened to it. I took the time to actually like equal out my judgmental self about SoundCloud rappers and the, and the connotations involved with SoundCloud rappers. So then I was listening to it and I was like, this is good. Like artists have to start from somewhere. You're not going to be up in the clouds ready and you're not going to be having millions of streams on your first song. It just right. happened like that. And the That's old another part- thing I feel, I feel people try to rush oftentimes like people, they go for that, like one hit, they want that million so bad, but like sometimes you just got to build yeah. like me, me personally, I'm, I have a loyal, loyal support system. Like if you have a bunch yeah. of loyal people that support you, it turns from, I remember I was trying to get 1K, then 2K, 3K. Now here I'm on going towards 10K and you yeah. just keep working hard and keep building that support system. You'll be fine. And yeah. there's like a lot, you could do it independently. A lot of people yeah. think they need that big record deal. Nah, you don't right. you can do it by yourself. It, it, it gets like that, you know, it gets like that when sometimes the support isn't there and you have to do it yourself. You have to stay right. independent. Like you could, I mean, I remember in the last episode, we were actually talking about this by myself and I was telling the people that stop wasting your time in the industry. If you just want quick money by quick money, I don't right. I mean, I mean, trying to get millions of streams on your first song, that's trying to get quick money because it's not right. that quick and easy most of the time. It's not. It, it no. takes time. It takes effort. It takes it takes a lot of the work and the uh, the amount of songs that you have to make and the amount of experience that you have to do. I remember my first beat I made on something really small compared to that little keyboard in the background, really small, and my beats weren't good at all. But it wasn't about the equipment. It was about the experience and the journey right. that you have to go through to be good. Because I remember. Exactly. Um, 
the baby who's a, who's a, also an artist from america he was um he was talking on an interview with a with another interview a radio station or something mm-hmm. and they were on about that he before he blew he went broke he couldn't promote he couldn't invest into his music career but then he like broken within his music as well and then suddenly like out of nowhere he went up because he knew that it wasn't about quick money it wasn't about right on. it wasn't about trying to get loads of streams on your first song it was about elevating and keep persevering that's the word i love perseverance when you keep pushing forward when it gets hard that's what loads of rappers need to understand yeah 100 percent. i agree now on your on your occasion do you think it's hard to be a new york rapper and wanting to be big one day and known as an mc do you think it's hard being a young rapper it definitely is because you already have so many that made it out of New York. You got Casanova, A Boogie, Little TJ. You have, you have a lot of successful people that made it out. And I feel oftentimes people try to copy their wave or their style. Like a lot of times yeah. I see people like they don't have their own sound. But like I feel like if you listen to if you listen to me, it doesn't even you won't even know I'm from New York by the type <laughs> of stuff I make. So yeah. it's like I don't try to. I listen to so many different kinds of music, rock, R&B, yeah. some heavy metal, a lot of emo, you know, like if you, if you listen to a lot of different kinds of music, I don't just, I love that New York stuff. Not yeah. only that, you got, you know, you got the old school, you got 50 Cent, Public Enemy, you got a lot of great New York MCs, yeah. but Definitely. you got to develop your own sound. And through listening to so many different types of music, that's how I feel like I got my own sound. Yeah, you need to be, what do we call it? Um, you need to be yourself basically you can't be trying like i guess sometimes listening to this kind of music can make you make music like that because you're influenced but influenciation gets to a point where you can control it and you can actually build something and evolve that sound instead of trying to copy because sounds change this is why artists right. disappear this is why artists get blown away no one no one remembers them because their sound died out and sometimes you have to make something different and keep changing it because there's artists who are versatile. That's the word I was looking for. You need to be versatile in the industry. So you can 100 percent flows, different kind of styles, but make sure you've got your genre. Make a genre for yourself and make right. your own make your own story out of it. Because I think the main reason why people make music like good rappers is because they have a story behind their music. And they're not just making it for the money. They're actually making right. it because they want to tell people and they want to help people or let them connect to their story or their sound. It, it's all different, isn't it? Right on. Yeah. Um, what do you personally classify as success? That's a big question. I feel like it's basically how do you see yourself? You could have all these millions of dollars, but if you feel like, you haven't put your best work out there. I don't feel like it's success. I'd rather be a guy that only makes $10,000, $20,000, but I know that my fans are really rocking hardcore for me. And that yeah. they're, like, if I feel like they constantly keep wanting new music, then I'm doing my job. But if I feel like I'm just having, like, I have like unloyal fans that like they're waiting for something every once in a while, that's not really a success for me. I'd rather have a real, underground fan base and people that'll really yeah. ride for me i'm talking about sold out shows like if i have a show i want if 500 500 sheets i want all 500 there so it's all it's to me it's all loyalty in how your yeah. fans respect you and treat you because i was looking at instagram page the other day and it had over a thousand followers which is it is quite average at, for nowadays but the amount of interaction they he, that person was getting on their posts was so little. It was like seven likes. Like you could say that's fake followers. You could say that's just followers who aren't loyal to what you do. They don't really right. care. That's, that's what, what I'm saying. Like my Instagram, I tell you, I was usually on Snap, but I just started using the Instagram. I'm using that more now for like promotions and stuff. But like I put out a poll you see how you could put out the polls on instagram oh yeah on the store so i put out a poll there i was like who wants a new song this week and i had i think 120 people said yes and two said no so i had 98 percent 98 percent of my followers wanted yeah a new song so that's what i mean because i really built this the right way i might not have the biggest numbers yet 
but I know they're going to come because I'm, re- I'm really doing this the right way. And I feel like yeah. more people should more people should just focus on building a real loyal fan base than just going for that big hit, like you were saying earlier. Because a loyal fan base, that's what makes you a career. A hit early on, that doesn't make you a career, but a loyal fan base does. What it is, is the difference between passive fans and loyal fans. If you have passive fans, they'll go along, listen to music one time and basically forget about you. Even if you release a new song, they'll be like, ah, it's just another one, just another one. But if you have loyal fans, they'll listen to your song on replay. They'll listen to it on rewind overnight as they go to sleep. They'll, they'll They'll come into your concerts. They'll be the ones jumping next to you and you'll invite them onto the stage because you think... You, you're the right. one who helped me up here. This is why I'm on this, then, because you're here. And another thing another thing is, like, I see a lot of these artists, like, they try to be Hollywood, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Like, they, they try to make themselves, like, they're bigger than they are, but they're not that big. Me, personally, I don't treat myself like that. Like, a lot yeah. of fans I have, I, communi- I, I communicate with them. I, they DM yeah. me, I DM them. I, have, I yeah. love fan communication i'm not like I would, that's something i'll always do even as i start getting bigger like i believe in that like it's a real that's a real connection if you can speak to your fans and talk to them that's something every artist should do it's right it's true because it's it's because you need to interact with them you need to talk to them and these sometimes these big rappers as well like imagine if they started talking to their fans like the amount of more people that would want to talk to them to get that face to be like whoa i just talked to i just talked to uh like one huge rapper the other day you should try him too. have a conversation with him you know but I just think it, it, it's it, you just need to interact with them. You can't be acting as if you're some superstar when you just started a week ago, or you have over, or you just have forty streams on SoundCloud or something. And you, you just need to be humble, to be honest. When people are like, "Do you have fans?" I'm like, "No, I have supporters," because I don't really right. like to call them fans because they're they're like friends to me. They're like family now because they like my right. music. They like my personality. They like my flow. That's cool. You're part of the family. Now. It's that easy. Just exactly. to be close to me. That it's just that's the way I think it is. Yeah. Right um, what do you think are the most important factors to be able to reach your goals? Um, I feel like it's work ethic and self determination. Mm-hmm. If you believe in yourself, you can do anything. I had a lot of people tell me that like I couldn't do it because of my skin color or because my style maybe wasn't catchy at the time. Yeah. Or like, even, oh, he uses too much auto-tune. First of all, I don't really need auto-tune. Just the way <laughs> I was recording, that's what I wanted to do. But, like, you'll see, I could, like, you know, I could freestyle five, ten minutes straight, like, better than a lot of these rappers that are big. But, like, I, I just believe in self-motivation because I, I feel like as long as I believe in myself, I could do anything. I don't care what people think about me. I don't care if care what people are saying about me publicity yeah publicity so i'm gonna just keep doing my thing and i feel like that'll get me to the top of that shit. a lot of our listeners will connect with that a lot of our listeners who, who listen to the podcast they'll definitely connect to those words that if you believe in yourself you can do anything and the fact that you have to believe that sometimes people won't support the grind sometimes people will take the mic or just joke about it but it's it's your it's your it's your right to keep going because they can't physically stop you from making music. I was talking to a, um, a music video producer the other day who who basically shoots music videos, and his story was that he started making music videos, but he had such strong hate against him at the time that there was people who came to him and did, literally destroyed his music equipment. Now you could say that's physically stopping him, but it's not because he carried on. Now he's one of the well, most well-known music producers, music video like cameramen in, right. in the whole city. And it's like, it's crazy how you can really self-motivate when no one motivates you, when no one shows right. you. Right, and like, I had a lot of people tell me like, I would, I, a lot of people were telling me, oh, you'll never hit, I don't think you'll ever hit 1K. And like, this is like underground numbers, but like, they're like, you won't, you'll never hit 1K. And like, me just proving them wrong day by day, that's my satisfaction. I was like, <laughs> I got seven, Danny Don just passed 7K right now. That's on going to 10K. I got some new stuff coming out. Mo- I got, yeah, I'm going to drop that Monday. I got some new stuff yeah. coming out Monday. So like, I'm just a pro- flying pressure, man. I don't care 
people think I know my music's gonna be the talking for me. Yeah. That's all I gotta say. Definitely. I think that's the that's that's right because even family may not support you. And it and it, <laughs> yeah. it, it gets like that because people would think, well, at least your family support you, you'd be like, No, sometimes family right. doesn't support you. Sometimes family doesn't even care to listen. And they just right. they just want you to become what they want you to become. But sometimes exactly. it's time for you to make a stand and for you to to change the, the story, change it, turn around the right. ending where it says the end, turn it into the next chapter and still continue. Right. I just hit 10.7K on Spotify on my new song called Switch Up. And I just announced oh, yeah. a little competition just to let people try and win uh, just a few dollars. But what I'm doing is, is not about the money. It's not so that someone can get 15 pounds or whatever. It's so that somebody can connect with it and become a loyal right. fan and be like, I want to listen to his music more so I can win more. So I can, so I can be his friend, so I can see him, so I can, I can see right. him on stage and I can see him grow. Cause that's what they want right. to see you do. They want to see you grow. That's why they're supporting you. That's why they're listening to music because they want to see you blow. They want to see you, you, wanna, you fly. You get me? Right. That's what it's about, for sure. Yeah. And like, it's all about creating that loyal fan base. Success is having right. a loyal fan base and having a fan base you can trust. That's, that's what I think. Is exactly. Right. And um, the last question for now is, uh, is it all about having good music or is the promotion side important as well? Honestly, I wish it was all about having good music, but <laughs> yeah, unfortunate. Unfortunately, you could only get to a certain level doing that. There are some guys out there, like um, you know, JID. He's yeah. under he's under Dreamville now with J Cole. He's a guy that literally just made it off good music. Like I was listening to him. I never even seen his face before. Nothing. Like literally, just yeah. like this guy was just a good rapper. I was like, wow, this guy's good. And there's a there's a couple other guys that do that too, but. For the most part now, I think it was um, Wi-Fi Juno from Florida said yeah. in an interview a few years ago, he said it used to be about 80-20, like 80% music, 20% image. Yeah. Now it's completely flipped where it's 80% image, 20% music. So yeah. unfor- unfortunately, yes, image is very important. That's sort of what I'm creating now. But um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's good having good music helps. I mean, if you have, I feel like if you have good music, you might not make it right away, but eventually, if you keep believing in yourself, you keep putting out good music, that you will make it regardless of the image. So yeah, good music really important, and image also really important. So to me, both are actually really important. But yeah, you need you need an image today in order to make it to I the think, high, to I think big places. If somebody wants to get signed to a label, they're definitely going to need some kind of promotion because what algorithms and these big record labels are actually looking for, or even not even record labels, just people, social validation, we call it in the promotion side of the industry. It's where it's not the blue tick. I'm talking about when people see hundreds of thousands of streams on your page, they're going to want to click on that one more, more than they want to click on the one with like, of like 50 streams because they're gonna want to right like they they can see that well my friend likes this one so maybe i'll like it too or like like hundreds of thousands of people are listening to this guy let's go check him out instead of 50 people are checking this guy that, that's that's cool <laughs> like yeah, i just, agree 100 percent. people they get yeah. phased by the numbers and stuff and not the good music there's a lot of stuff out there I've seen stuff for a few million streams and music's just not that good. And then I've seen yeah. stuff out there with like maybe 2,000, 3,000. I'm like, wow, yeah. like this kid's good. Literally. And it, you have to start somewhere, isn't it? Like I know some kind of promotion happens into these artists that really aren't that amazing. Like, um, you know, the guy who made Gucci gang, Gucci gang, Gucci gang, that guy. <laughs> yeah, I actually, honestly, I mean, yeah, I, I understand. I like him a lot though. I think he's got, yeah. good energy i think he's a little underrated too but i get what you're saying like the colored hair face tattoos like it's not the instagram video it's not even that i think he's actually taking the right approach with the promotion because yeah his song was catchy his song was really catchy and 100%. Still talking about it and his hair and everything like everyone's still talking about like why is this guy so weird but they still remember him and they're still telling their friends about right. him and they're telling other people how amazing this guy's song is and how funny it is like it's just like two words the whole song like it's weird he's taking the right 
Shout out Lil Pump. We fuck with Lil Pump in New York. <laughs> He's in the, Lil Pump. We think he's pretty good artist. I want to. I want to see his. I want to see his new stuff coming out. But yeah, for sure. We. I listen to him a lot. I think he. I think he's got that really good energy. You can't teach the energy like that. Yeah. He got really good energy. You have to be born with that kind of energy to stand right. on the stage. Like you can. You can be scared to stand on the stage, but you need that energy afterwards. You need to right. show everyone that. You need to get the crowd jumping along as you go. Right. Usually, I'll just be like cleaning the kitchen or something. I'll pick up like a spoon or something. I'll pretend like I'm at a concert because you just be like, yeah. this is what I want to do when I get older. This is what I want to do. When, what, this is what I want to do now. This is what I want to do when people start listening to my music and everything. And it, it's all about it's all about grinding and working. Do you think it's all about grinding and working and finding a loyal fan base? Oh, uh, yeah, I agree 100%, but also you got to you got to pick your spots. A lot of times I feel people yeah. like overdrop music. Like even um you know Russ from Georgia? Oh yeah. Russ, he was talking about how he used to drop a, like an album a week, so like 10 songs a week. Yeah. For like a whole year, two years and like it wasn't attracting any attention cuz like you can't just throw the whole kitchen sink at somebody. If you throw like a bunch of crap at people, it could be really good. But if it's just like so much, like no one's going to really lock in and listen to that. But then he started dropping a single every two weeks. Now you only got one song people got to listen to. So they see that, they're like, all right, this guy's pretty good. What's he got next? Then he drops another one. Then he drops another one. And then he just kept building from there. So yeah, I feel like it's people who overdrop music. It's really hard for them. I feel like you really got to balance your time. Yeah. And, um, just I think like, Russ, I think yeah. Russ is a really good example because I was I was just looking up on the internet I was I was researching and there was loads of hate against Russ like a lot of hatred but the fact that he's still grinding and I got a notification on my phone the other day on from Google actually saying that Russ has released his new his new single and it was like oh this guy's really taking the right approach he's still going no matter the right. hate he's self-motivating and he has that loyal fan base and even if two people plat hate two platinum albums two he got two platinum crazy. albums crazy and it's the fact that he people are still hating on his music but at least they listen to the music to hate it <laughs> right it's all about the streams and it's all about the loyal fan base because i don't yes, think streams can I, personally i don't think streams can uh can even compete against a loyal fan base and what a loyal fan base can do because loyal fan base because i remember there was this um there was a story from from years ago and this guy said you can buy this wristband for a hundred pounds or hundred dollars if you're a real fan for me as as an artist and uh, right. and people actually bought it like hundreds of people because the post went viral because it was so weirdly stupid that people were going to buy a wristband for a hundred dollars but then it was like that's your loyal fan base right there and you can grow from that and obviously he, he got a lot of money from it but you know he was still right. grafting and he was still grinding and he took the right approach to find the real ones 100 percent, i agree because i made the song uh switch up because um of fake friends trying to switch up on you and it's all about trying to find the real ones because friends can switch up you know friends can switch up and we've all had our daily dose of doses of uh people switching I, up on us and it's all about oh yeah all the all the time especially <laughs> especially where i'm from yeah people like people one day they're like fucking with you giving you high fives and shit and then the next day they like they don't even know you just walk past it yeah i mean that, that's life man it's just crazy yeah People just completely switch up, like because there was a beat switch right in the middle of the song. Hopefully, you heard that bit. And um, what that I said, uh, did you hear me? Just switch up, just like your fake friends last year who really need to fix up. I think that's just like it, it's it's like yeah. a it's like a straight up blunt line, but it's true because friends do switch up. Well, fake friends switch up. The real ones stay with you, and even if you get through the problems with the real ones, take the people switching up as a strength instead of a weakness that don't take it as if, Oh, I'm vulnerable. That's why people switch up on me. Take it as if I'm going to get stronger than from this and I'm not going to let myself out so easily. And I'm going to make sure to talk to people first and see where they are because I'm not going to go with someone who I can't evaluate as a good friend and as a good person. Right. right. So I think that's how you find your loyal fan base and your, loyal artists what should we call this episode because i actually have no clue yeah um 
Just call it GF40 soon to be on top because you know, I mean, I don't know when this <laughs> couple of years it's gonna be this gonna be worth a lot of money in a I couple think, of years. You got my first, you got my first, first interview, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, I can just imagine. You, call it, you could call it, you call it first official interview. Yeah, I think I'm gonna take a picture for this moment just in front of you, just in case you actually go viral. Sure. <laughs> We're just gonna take a picture. First interview, oh, five, four, three, two. <laughs> the camera just fell over. I mean, yeah, that's, it. <laughs> that's fire. Yes, sir. I appreciate it, though. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I really enjoyed this. Well, my studio just fell apart, but I think that calls it for the end of the episode. I think that was a really a good episode. And we talked a lot about how to get into the industry. So I think I'll call it how to get into the industry featuring GF Woody interview. That'll be That's perfect. Right. Let's do it. All right. Appreciate thank it. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Me. Thank you so much for having me. No, I appreciate it. Thank you. Definitely. I'll be, I'll definitely be back on here soon. Okay. I really enjoyed this. I Shout out well. to my boy. Shout out to the Kingdom Sound first interview yeah. ever. Yeah, for the gang. <laughs> Let's go. All right. I hope everyone has a lovely day. Thank you for tuning in to the Kingdom Mix. Have a great day. <laughs>